are especially uh, clinical uh, depression. And according to World Health Organization, uh, depression is the leading cause of disability worldwide. And it is estimated that about 300 people actually do suffer from depression, right? That is a huge number. Now, we must all have questions <clears throat> that um, about depression, what one goes through, signs and t symptoms, and even how to rise just above all that. I know I do. So we want you guys to stay tuned and watch this part of our discussion uh, that we, of course, started off last week, but we have uh, continued with it. And uh, in studio today, we have Onyango Otieno, um, a.k.a. Ricks the Poet, to help us, you know, discuss and understand better what it is like to live with uh, depression and to even just rise above it. We focus, of course, on depression mainly today. And then uh, we ask you that you may also send in your questions, uh, your comments, your suggestions to our Facebook uh, page, which is at Y254 channel at isacute at Christine K as well. And also on Instagram and Twitter, you can also find us at Y254 channel, isacute TV show and at Christine K. We do welcome all your um, engagements. Now, of course, I just want to say thank you so much, uh, Rick's the Poet, uh, for coming through today and, you know, for being able to share with us mm -hmm. your experience. Thank you for... All right. Okay. So, you know, just to start us off, um, you know, you have uh, gone through depression, but you have you know, gone past it, you have become a successful entrepreneur. We will talk about that. But, you know, just tell us, how did it start off? How did you realize that you are, or how did you get diagnosed with uh, depression? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I've, I've experienced depression for a number of times in my life. Mm -hmm. um, the first one began when I was 16 years of age. Mm -hmm. uh, it was the first time I felt suicidal mainly because I came from a very violent home. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents fought a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, being a firstborn, I didn't have so many spaces to open up about my expressions. Mm -hmm. And so it's also the same time that I began writing because I had to look for a way to channel out my emotions. Um, and so by the virtue of not being able to um, articulate my feelings to my parents mm -hmm. and because they were you know not in a position to understand me at that point mm -hmm. I ran away from home a lot of times mm -hmm. um, I was expelled from school um, and um, towards the end of that year in 2004 when I was 16 I uh, I ran away to Mombasa I wanted to go kill myself mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. Um, I'm just a bit lucky I had friends uh, I could go to at that time mm -hmm. who took me in mm -hmm. um, and uh, I was I was I was able to survive and so because even when I got back home life wasn't just as smooth because um, we still had a lot of family instabilities um, and being an introverted person it wasn't very easy still to express mm -hmm. myself at mm -hmm. home um, and so the writing helped me to go through a lot of that pain mm -hmm. also because um, the violence that I experienced, uh, one done on me and one done <coughs> on my mom, mm -hmm. was very difficult to deal with as a young person. Mm -hmm. And so uh, because of these challenges, I experienced uh, what's called post-traumatic stress mm -hmm. disorder. Um, which puts a huge strain on your relationships uh, with other people and the one you have with yourself because your your brain is trying to deal with everything you've been through uh, while at the same time you're trying to have a normal life. Yeah. Um, and so I, I somehow managed to finish high school. Um, I went to about three high schools and then um, I joined, um, I went to Uganda to study my A-levels. Mm -hmm. So coming back to Kenya uh, and joining university, I couldn't finish university again mm -hmm. because of same family wrangles. Mm -hmm. um, and so I found myself lost at a point there. And mm -hmm. so that's why I started writing again mm -hmm. to perform publicly mm -hmm. uh, my, my works of art, which mm -hmm. was poetry at the time. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, you know, my dad wasn't really supportive of that because um, he didn't feel poetry is something <laughs> worth doing as, as work, mm -hmm. you know. And so 
um, getting that support from my mother was the thing that really helped me get out because now I didn't feel so closed up. Uh, by the time I was getting to around 25, uh, about there, um, things weren't too hard, but they also weren't too easy because I, 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 uh, I wasn't paying rent. I was at my mom's place. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't have to buy food. I was at my mom's place. Uh, but once I got out of their house, then the the new challenges mm -hmm. came because you have to deal with your emotions, you have to pay bills, you have to uh, deal with people, uh, with relationships, um, and still come out like you know what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that with work, um, trying to c take care of yourself, mm -hmm. Um, trying to get relationships right mm -hmm. um, and still deal with your healing trauma um, wasn't the, the easiest of things mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. um, and so I remember um, something happened uh, in January 2017. Mm -hmm. um, just a year before, we had lost a poet friend of ours to suicide. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we were very close. I couldn't go to his funeral because I couldn't imagine seeing him in a casket. So um, exactly a year later, 2017 January, um, I had just moved to a new house. Um, I didn't have a job at that time. Um, the organization we were running, wasn't things weren't so smooth at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I was coming off a very toxic relationship as well. So we lost another young artist mm -hmm. um, who was a close friend of ours. That time he died to, uh, due to low blood, low blood pressure. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that all that pressure just took me out, mm -hmm. you know? Um, the fact that your landlord won't understand that you're depressed, yes. he wants his money. Mm -hmm. Um, um, because I am I'm a young leader, mm -hmm. people, so many people look up to me because I, I try to get them through their own problems. Mm -hmm. And so I couldn't get through mine this time because the whole world is on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, and so I remember um, one day heading back home and just feeling like Perhaps I should follow my friends who are dead because they're not worried about rent mm. in their graves. They're not worried about traffic in their graves. They're not worried about the next meal, mm. you know. Um, so I remember heading back home so tired and um, I took a shower two hours long thinking to myself, what, are I, what am I going to do when I get out of this place, out of this bathroom? Um, and so... Mm -hmm. I battled a lot with <coughs> my mind uh, and uh, I remember forcing myself when I got out of that shower, forcing myself um, to reach out to my laptop because writing has been the thing for me mm -hmm. to express myself when things are so difficult. Mm -hmm. And so um, I had to choose between committing suicide and just trying one more time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, because at the time, y you don't even know how to tell your parents, yo, mom, mom, I I'm depressed. Mm -hmm. what, w what would you say? Where would you start? Yeah. Um, and also because you don't want to <laughs> share your problems with too many people. Yes, okay. True. So I got on Facebook and um, I started word after another. Um, two, three, four, five, a paragraph, just explaining myself and releasing all that mm -hmm. um, to actually just let people know that I break too. Um, I could be all these strong things you, you see every day, but I'm so human. There are days I don't even know how mm -hmm. to get out of bed. Um, and right now, I don't even know where I'll get money for rent or um, my relationship is not working, all these problems. Um, and so just, it was quite a long read, 18th, Ju 18th January 2017, mm -hmm. it was a long read. Um, and I felt something go out when I did that. 
Uh, and of course, it wasn't easy because I still I have close friends at home, people who you know um, I would say take care of me. Uh, and uh, the moment people read that, it it changed my life. Mm -hmm. Also because the whole world is calling you at that yeah. time. People want to call you to ask you if you're okay. People who you, you haven't talked to in three years, mm -hmm. but you just talk on Facebook. Mm -hmm. They want emailing you, WhatsApping, and also even that buzz a lot alone was uh, very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, and so I I still I shut down completely. Mm -hmm. So my closest friends were the ones who would come to my house. Mm -hmm. um, they would wash my house. They would cook. Mm -hmm. They would open up the curtains. Uh, they would force me to get outside to just mm -hmm. see the sun. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a DJ friend who would come with everybody else and they would do live mixes in the house. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm among the lucky ones who mm -hmm. had friends. They didn't understand depression really, yeah. but they knew I wasn't okay. So they could, they did everything they could to, to get better. yeah, to now get Let me going. ask you because you've mentioned about two things that I've actually not uh, tackled right here. Uh, first of all, is you know going on social media and expressing yourself and telling people that you are depressed. We are aware that a lot of young people have even committed suicide on social media. Mm. Like they, they take videos and then they release them mm. or they write and, and, say, and say that they will kill themselves. Did uh, you, uh, you know, uh, exposing yourself, I would say, on social media, was it really more of positive or negative? For me, it was positive mm. because it's even out of that that I'm here today. Yeah. Uh, on on such a show, mm -hmm. um, I had been writing about my life a lot previously, uh, especially because of the violence at home. Mm -hmm. For me, writing was that, and also because I came to understand so many people go through a lot of things, but they don't talk about them. Mm -hmm. And so, for me, um, writing was a form of protest mm -hmm. or activism mm -hmm. uh, that. I'm fighting for my freedom, I'm coming out of silence, mm -hmm. and I'm saving myself. Mm -hmm. My dad didn't like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he still d doesn't like it, mm -hmm. you know, if I talk about him here and there. And of course, I've grown up over time to, you know, get away from the bitterness and the anger yeah. uh, as it was in the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, but if I, I never wrote, you know, even even before Facebook was here, if mm -hmm. I never wrote, then I don't know what would have become of me. Yeah. So for me, um, I, I was used to writing about myself, about mm -hmm. my pains, about all these things. And that's why people looked at me like a very strong person, you know. And so they'd come to me with their problems and all these kind of things. Uh, and so when I did that in mm -hmm. la 2017, it's last year, uh, everything changed you know um even even when i started settling in and uh, you know i started like reselling a book i had written yeah. that time um i i eventually got rent and out of selling the book somebody mm -hmm. gave me a job somewhere mm -hmm. um, and my year just began you know mm -hmm. and something funny i tell people it's through that despair that um in fact, that year I earned the most money I'd ever earned ever in my life mm -hmm. out of me coming out mm -hmm. that I'm depressed yeah. and this is I'm really struggling with this and this and this and this. Mm -hmm. And it opened up so many opportunities I, I never even thought existed mm -hmm. or could exist before me. Uh, and um, that alone was a sign that there is so much more I can still give the world mm -hmm. and um, I need to keep pushing. So. I started talking more about mental health because yeah. this time I wanted to understand. I knew if I don't tackle this problem this time, next time it's going to kill me. Yeah. So I, I just became more courageous with time and started mm -hmm. talking more about mental health. I read up, I read up, I read up. I talked to people about my own journey mm -hmm. and there are countless people getting back to my inbox. Um, how do I go about this? How do I go about that? I don't know who to talk to and everything. Mm -hmm. So even along that whole process, I, I got friends who are psychiatrists, who are therapists, who are mm -hmm. psychologists. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, now I connect people who are going through these disorders well, to yeah. these guys. Mm -hmm. You know, some like a link because we somehow 
people somehow trust artists so much. Yeah. So I use that platform and the power to, mm. to connect, you know, these people. All right. Yeah. So you also mentioned the second thing is, you know, about uh, your experience back at home. And I find that interesting because I had actually read about it during the week, how um, fathers are very Im vital uh, when it comes to, you know, the molding of, of children. And the moment the father is either not present or they're abusive uh, in that uh, homestead, then most of the times those children become depressed. So I'm, I'm really glad that you at least got to share that with us, you know, um, and how you mm. went, you got um, over it. Mm. But how is your relationship now with your father? Well, um, he just got 53 on 30th May, just mm. two days ago. I went to see him at his place of work. Um, we respect each other. Mm -hmm. Things are not where I'd like them to be, mm -hmm. of course. But I'm a grown up now. Yeah. Um, and uh, I got to a place at some point in my life, I said, I'm not going to live with all this anger for the rest yes. of my life. Yeah. I want to live my life. I want to do my own relationships. Mm -hmm. um, if, if he wants to do better with himself, he'll mm -hmm. do better with himself. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that took a lot of discipline and self-care. Yeah, um, right. But we honestly, we, we talk once in a while, mm -hmm. um, not, not so often. Bec we, don't, I, we just live, also we, we live in the same town, so mm -hmm. he's, the house is just a walk from mine. Mm -hmm. And so just the existence of that mutual respect, I mm -hmm. think, makes things easier. Um, and, I and did he get to understand what he did? What I'm not sure about that part. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure yeah. because uh, most of most of abusers and oppressors say they they weren't doing anything wrong, mm. or it was the devil, uh, right. or those kind of things. And so I I stopped waiting for apologies mm -hmm. and stories because I realized they may never come, yeah. or m they may get there when I'm 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 50 and he's almost dying. Mm -hmm. So. I don't want to live a miserable life just because somebody never thought he wronged me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I chose to just let go and forgive and um, um, even pray for him because yeah. he also equally came from a, a violent background and so it w it was part of that cycle, right. yeah. which I said has to stop with me. Had to yes, because mm. I also you know wanted to get your perspective on. I mean, you have gone through that, and now you've just told us that you father also went through that mm. you know maybe what kind of things do you think you need to do better and even other people out there need to do better to make sure that it ends there mm. and it doesn't go to the next generation mm. their children and thereafter well there are a lot of things that um, cause people to act the way they do um, and uh, for, for us you know, my, my parents have definitely been depressed even in between their relationship. Mm -hmm. They may not have known it, uh, but how they acted. And mm -hmm. these are things I started seeing when I'm reflecting back mm -hmm. even at, at my own depression. Um, and I realized that a lot of how my father saw life is how he was brought up. You know, his, his own dad, my grandpa was a polygam uh, polygamist. Um, he beat up his own wives in front of his kids. Mm. Um, those women were like pawns, man. He, you know, like yeah. they weren't respected. And so the kids just grow up knowing uh, this mother is just a woman they can play around with. Mm -hmm. They can call her by her name and all these kind of things. And so children are actually affected by that system. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't get out of that system, you don't get yourself out of it, y it's gonna, you're gonna succumb to it. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I had to travel back. Mm -hmm. I had to travel back and understand where is this thing coming from? Mm -hmm. What's the root? And so seeing that um, thi this was the, the toxicity that was there mm -hmm. in my village there, I, I said, this is not right. Even as a child, I could tell, why is it that my mother is the one yeah. crying all the time? Why is it that my aunties are not treated like they are people, you know? Mm. Um, and it's not all of them, but they're just certain traits you see in uh, the system that, you know, the patriarchy that has really just messed up this world. And I said, because I want my mother to be treated better, mm -hmm. um, I'll treat people better. 
I'll treat myself better because um, even that violence also affects men. Mm -hmm. You know, as young boys today, we can't say we are strong all the time. Um, we were abused. Our fathers abused us. Our mm -hmm. mothers abused us. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't go back to, like, settle it from the history, then you won't know what you're solving. So for me, for, it, for you to, to, to make it stop, you have to go back and understand yeah, the root. The problem. Yeah. All right, and then um, also there's the aspect of the toxic relationship you are in. Mm -hmm. Just how, um, how much would you say a, a relationship has, how much effect does it have on you as a person, especially when you're going through um, a depression mm -hmm. or any type of mental illness? Well, um, a lot of us don't pay so much attention to this. Mm -hmm. um, as young people, we approach relationships on a very surface level. Mm -hmm. You don't think that um, your actions could affect someone's mental health. You don't think um, there's a life outside sex. Mm -hmm. You don't think the uh, financial stability or instability could affect you or could affect them in a way. We just get in there. Also because we are not even trained, we are not schooled well enough to understand how to deal with people. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of us get into relationships as escape routes mm -hmm. to getting away from our problems, mm -hmm. um, satisfying our sexual hunger and um, looking for an emotional uh, route, you know, yeah. without dealing with ourselves. And so if you get into a relationship and um, you're not healthy, you're not healthy spiritually, emotionally, psychologically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's just, you're just creating a beehive of problems, yeah. you know? Uh, and so that was it. I, I wasn't even there. I wasn't very prepared for such a heavy emotional thing. Mm -hmm. She wasn't prepared for such a heavy. So it was just two toxic people drowning each other, yeah. you know? And that's happening to so many young people mm -hmm. just because you don't want to show the world that you're weak or you know, you're, you're not strong enough to get through a relationship mm -hmm. and all that kind of things. And so also, if, if you are self-aware and you take care of yourself, mm -hmm. um, you definitely want to get into a relationship with somebody who is also self-aware yeah. and they take care of themselves. Yeah. You don't want to be the one carrying someone's burdens all the time. You don't want people to carry your burdens all the time. All right. That does not mean that we will, you, you, you're a perfect person or um, you will never get angry or this kind of things. Mm -hmm. But just being aware that, yo, this is where I am mentally. This is where I am spiritually. This is where I am emotionally create some form of balance, balance which right. is very healthy yeah. for uh, a sustainable relationship all right okay so thank you so much for sharing that uh guys we have had of course uh rick's the poet sharing his life story dealing with depression so we'll take a short break but when we come back we will also get to learn about his successful entrepreneurship career so do stay tuned